Oh, hey, Ronnie. What do you want? Who's this Ronnie? Never heard of him. I'm going by Ronald now. Okay, Ronnie. I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm the uh, head salesman over at EasyWorks now. Turning over a new leaf, huh? Well, why don't you make like a leaf? Blow away. Wanted to uh, see if you wanted to sign up with EasyWorks today. EasyWorks? Nah, I'm not selling that crap. Beat it. Whoa, 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 hear me out. They finally got a handle on the quality control over there. So they're cranking out some pretty good new products. I know what you're saying, I remember the old stuff. It was junk. Bamboo chainsaw, nobody wants that crap. We got some new good things over there. I really think you should check it out. Still not interested, Ronnie. So why don't you leave before you end up like Steve? Uh, who is this Steve? Am I, am I supposed to know him? That was the name of the last knucklehead they sent down here from Easy Works. And I think there was a, a Dale and a Rangely and uh, oh yeah, yeah, a Rich too. Yeah, Rich. Well, uh, I don't know any of them guys, but uh, they don't got what I got. Oh yeah, Ronnie? What do you got besides no credit and bad breath? <laughs> Nah, they didn't have this. Highly sought after by Toy Chainsaw Collectors. Oh, look at that. Doesn't look like you got this one up in your collection. All right, Ronnie, cut the crap. How do I get one? Oh, sounds like somebody's interested now. Well, we're running a special, but you gotta sign up today only. Not tomorrow. Not calling me in my office next week. Today. All right, Ronnie. What's the bare minimum? First off, it's Ronald. Secondly, 100 units. 100 units? I, I can't do 100 units. How about 10? My saw don't like that. But I can do 10. You're going to have to cut me a check today. I can do that, but I get the saw today, whoa, right? Whoa, whoa, yeah, you'll get the saw. Just gotta sign the check over. Okay, all right, I can do that. Yeah, I'll do it. I got my checkbook right here. I just gotta get me a pen. Oh, I got a brand new EasyWorks pen right here. Why don't you sign with quality? Oh, thank you. Oh, I'll just use my own pen. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is going to be on this here 1974 Sears Roto Spader Killer Tiller. And the reason I call it the Killer Tiller is it's got this locking lever on here. And some people would lock that lever on when they'd have it in reverse. And that thing would back them up against the fence. And they'd start climbing up. And they'd all be in a panic. And they'd be trying to release that lever. And they'd be, help me! Help me! The killer's killing! And then by the time they release that lever, they'd be dead. That's why they call it the killer tiller. Now this tiller, when it came in, it didn't look like this. And in order for me to show you what it looked like when it came in, we need to go back in time. So here we go. We're going to go back in time. Whoa! 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 Today's how-to video is going to be on this here, 1974 Sears Scroto Tiller, or Tilter Plow. How do I know it's from 1974? First two digits of the code is the year it was made. And what's it say? 74. So this came in for repair. So this how-to is going to show you what I do when something comes in for repair, so we can get it running. First thing I notice is this throttle is broke. The cable's broke. So I'm gonna show you how I go about fixing that. And we can still use the original throttle. All right, so the very first thing I always do is see if it's got any oil in it. Yep, it's got oil in it, because I don't want to be starting it. 
and then find out got no oil in it and then it blows up. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a peek inside the gas tank, see what kind of condition that is because it's metal. Yeah, it's going to need a new gas cap, so we'll get one of them. And oh yeah, it's full of rust. So I have to take the tank off and clean it. Now there's a couple ways you can get that rust out of there. One is white vinegar. And another one is you can buy those rust removal products that you can pour in there. And then with a metal tank, you should seal it so it doesn't happen again. That's why they use plastic tanks now on a lot of stuff. Because the metal one's rough. Now look at this thing. Still got the original spark plug. Know how I can tell? Still got the blue paint on it from the factory. It's even got the original fuel line. So, not much has been done. So now I want to see if it's got spark. So I got my spark tester. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look, since the throttle is broke, and see what position the throttle's in. And it looks like the throttle is in the stop position. So that means it's cutting off the spark. So I'm going to disconnect this cable because i got to take it off to fix it anyway. And I'm going to pull it back. Now I'm going to give it a couple tugs on the rope, see if we got any spark. No spark. Now this motor has got points condenser. So chances are the points are either wore out or they're all corroded and they got to be cleaned. But I'm not going to mess with the points. I'm going to put an electronic ignition coil on there. All right, so we know it's got no spark. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the plug, put a compression tester on it. We're going to see how much compression it's got. Now from pulling it, I've been doing this a lot of years. I could tell it's got compression. But for you watching, I'm going to put a compression tester in there. We're going to see how much compression it's got. Okay, I got compression tester screwed in. Give it like three pulls. Check it. Do it again. To see if you get a consistent reading. You can even do it three times. But that's enough. Went to over 90 and then it did it again. That's enough compression on one of these eight horse Briggs and Scrattons. So it'll start once I get spark to it. Chances are it's gonna need the carpetrator worked on, but let's get some spark to it. And then we'll move on. Okay, I found a good used coil, electronic ignition coil that I'm gonna use. Now if you look at the old coil, this part here is missing. This is the electronic ignition part. That's what makes this electronic. If it's missing, it's a points one. And then you want to check if you got the right coil by putting the laminates on the magnet. And make sure they line up. Now if you want to use a new coil, the part number is 398811. Now this is the same coil I used on that cast iron Briggs that I showed. How to convert that to electronic. And again, you get a bunch of stuff in here. See, the new coil looks different. And again, it's marked. These coils are marked. You have to look real close. Cylinder side. This side out, you have to look real close so you don't put it on backwards. And then Briggs recommends the air gap between 10 and 14 thousandths. And we're going to go like 12. Now if you don't have a feeler, this card they give you in the box, they give you a piece of paper and they give you this as like a card. You could use this. This card's thick enough. To, to use as an air gap. 
Well, I'm gonna put this used coil on, because that's what I told the customer. I said, if I had a good used coil, would you want that? And he said, yeah, that's fine. So it's real simple to do this. Take the two screws out. Quarter inch socket. And then you can leave all the points and everything behind the flywheel. Now if you want to replace the points, I have a video that the title is How to Replace the Points on a Bridge and Stretch. Now see this wire here? That's the wire going to the points and this is the kill wire. So all you do is cut that wire. And then there's a little clip that was holding that wire there and it come off. So I'm going to take that clip out. And like I said, this is the kill wire. So I'm going to come over here and disconnect this kill wire. Which is just this little metal tab. Push down, probably the end of it's probably bent. Push down and take it out, release it. And then I'm going to snip that off too, because we don't need it. Snip both them wires off. Just leave them points in there. Now make sure this is clean back here. Well, I'll make sure you got good ground, so if this is corroded, Sand it, and then I'm going to sand the magnet, get that nice and clean. Okay, I sanded all this and the magnet, and I, since I'm using a used coil, I sanded the rust off this. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about these coils. It's only got one connection, and that's your kill. Don't ever put 12 volts to this, you'll fry this coil. I've seen people do that, put 12 volts to the coil on their lawn tractor. This isn't battery ignition, it's magneto. So if you ever want to test one of these electronic ignition coils, instead of using a meter to measure the ohms and all that, just pull this wire off or disconnect it from there and pull it. If it still don't spark, this is bad. It either works or it don't work. Simple as that. So I'm going to stick this on from the other coil. See, it's got that little tab, this little air, air deflector. And then I'm going to route this wire through here, because I'm going to hook that up to the kill switch. And this is the way this one goes on, like this. You couldn't put this one on the other way, because it don't have that little nub or this air deflector. I'll pull this all the way up, so you got a big gap, snug these down, line up the magnets, put your feeler in there, I'm going to use 12, you can use 10, you can use 11, 12, 13, 14, they recommend between 10 and 14, I got a chart, that's what it said on there. That's from them, Briggs and Stratton. They both said it. All right. Now, let's put the recoil on, see if we got sparkage. Oh yeah, while you're in here, check this thing. There's a little hole in the end of this. And underneath this little metal plug is a little wick. So I'm going to put some lubricant on there. That helps keep this lubricated. You ever, you ever get one of these and it's squealing? Squealing so loud it drives you crazy? It starts kicking the rope out? This thing is bad. Chances are the shaft that this is spinning on is all dirty. And it's slowing it down or making it bind. So you can either take it off and clean it and oil it or buy a new one of these starter clutches. 
But I'm gonna put a little lubricant on there. So if you ever get that, one of these old ones with that squealing, that's what it is, that starter clutch. What's that squealing? That's driving me nuts. Make it stop. Sometimes it'll kick the rope out and then when you shut the motor off, it sucks the rope in and breaks it. Then you got a fixed recoil. Okay, got the cover back on, got the kill wire hooked back up. And I'm gonna use my Briggs spark tester this time. I could have used this one too, but I'm gonna use the Briggs one because I got the plug out. Now we got spark. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm gonna put a new plug in it because I'm tuning it up. So I'm gonna put a brand new plug in it. And if you want to buy that 1974 plug, I'll sell it to you on eBay for about 100 bucks. Okay, I done put the new plug in. The original plug was a CJ8 Champion. That's what I put in there. You could also use a J19LM spark plug. I gapped it at 30 thousandths. And I checked the old plug and that's what it was gapped at. Because I don't want to hear you in the comments. It should be 25. It should be 30, it should be 30. It's not that critical. 30, 25, 30, it's not gonna make it run that much difference. It'll be fine. All right, now another thing I like to do on these old flatheads is check the head bolts. Make sure they're tight. Sometimes the bolts will stretch when they get hot over time. And these all seem to be tight. Especially the ones over the exhaust valve. They tend to loosen up. Oh, that one was a little loose. But yeah, they seem good. Now, we'll take the air cleaner off. Let's take a look at that. See what's left of that. Oh, look at that. It's got one of them foam ones on there. That's all falling apart. That's probably original too from 1974, looking at it. So let's get rid of that. And get rid of any, any of that foam that's around there. Okay. Now I'm going to spray a little carb spray in there. Just to see if it'll run and die. Because it's got no gas in it. Cause we're gonna have to take the tank off and clean it. And I know you're gonna say this too. You shouldn't be using that. You're gonna blow the engine up. We're not gonna be blowing no engines up. I've been doing this for over 40 years. I haven't blown one up yet. Just gonna spray it in there to see if it runs and dies. I'm not gonna run it or try to run it on car spray. I'm just gonna use it as a troubleshooting tool. That's all I'm using it for. Spray a good amount in there. And it's got a choke over here. It's all tied in. All right. Okay, so we know it'll run. So now I'm gonna clean the tank, put new fuel line on, and see if it'll run. Oh, sounds like money. Stay tuned. Okay, done got the tank off. Now I'm gonna pull this sediment bowl and clean that. And then I'm gonna rinse out the fuel tank clean it out real good, put it back on with a new fuel line, put some gas in it, see if it'll start. If not, then we're gonna go through the carburetor. That's stuck on there. May have to put a new one on if I break it. Hey, look at that nasties in there. Look at all them boogers. Screen is pretty clean. And then I'll put a new gasket in here. Because look at this one, it's hard as a carp. It's all breaking apart. And then this screen comes out too, if you want to take that out. Just get a little something, you know, you don't want to wreck it. If you don't have to. I'll clean that. This is closed. 
See how it's opening in there to let the fuel in? Oh, look at all the nasties in there. I got to clean all that out too. Because that'll keep it from flowing good. You want to make sure the fuel is going to flow good, so we'll clean that out. I think I got a little wire brush I can get in there with. Like a, from like a gun cleaning kit. Got a little wire brush I can get in there. Now I'm going to rinse it out some kerosene. Alright, another good way to clean these gas tanks is you can put nuts and bolts in there or pea gravel. I remember years ago at my brother Farrell's shop, we used to have an old paint shaker. And we took the part off that uh, the gallons of paint went in and we made a, a, a little jig on there where we could strap gas tanks to it. And we'd seal them up, we'd put nuts and bolts in there, put some kerosene in there, and just... Let the thing shake for about, you know, a half hour or so and it'd be clean as a whistle. All right, I got me a little wire brush. You can get one of these at a hardware store. I think they use it for plumbing. I don't know, somebody gave this to me. But it fits in there. You can use this. Now, I would just put it in my blast cabinet, but maybe y'all don't have a blast cabinet. Not everybody's got a blast cabinet. Not everybody's got all these tools. That's why I try to show you just everyday kind of stuff that you might have. Or you can go and buy this at the hardware store for not very much money. And you could use it for other stuff. Blast it out a little bit. That'll clean it up too, some of that carb spray. Oh, look at all that crap come out of there. Glass through everywhere. Make sure it's clear. Now be careful. Wear safety glasses. You want this stuff spraying back, hitting you in the eyeball. It'll hurt. Yeah, over 40 years of grime on this thing. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. All right, here's that little rubber gasket for the sediment bowl. 692-190. There's your part number. And then I'm gonna reuse the uh, these old school hose clamps. Cause I got that old school flyers. We're squeezing them clamps. I don't know where I got them pliers. Probably someone gave them to me. People give me all kinds of stuff. Just snug it up, you ain't gotta get crazy. Now I'll reinstall the tank and I'll run a new piece of fuel line. Okay, got fuel tank back on. Got a new fuel line. So I'm gonna put gas in it now. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Sediment bowl full, gas. Let me get my flashlight. Take a peek down in the carburetor hole here and see if it's leaking. Nope, no leaks down there. Not yet. And now here's a new gas cap. This gas cap's under a bunch of different part numbers, which I got listed right here. Rotary and Stens and Oregon all well, make them. Okay. I'm gonna pull back on this cable all the way and that sets the choke, because this has got a choke. So I got it all back. Let's see if it'll start.
Now, I'm going to try to open the high speed a little bit. I'm going to open it up. See what happens. Let's try starting it again. Oh, there we go. Okay. I know you was all thinking the same thing. I hope he goes into the carburetor. We're going to have to go into the carburetor now. All right, I'm going to shut the fuel off, disconnect the fuel line. Boy, they don't make tillers like this anymore. Look at how heavy duty this thing is. All right, I got to take these screws out. It's got that vent hose on there. I might be able to just leave that on there. Now yeah, there's a rod going to the choke and one going to the throttle. So you just slide it out, slide this out, and take off this. See, it all come off like that. Now I can take this off. All right, let's clean it up and take it apart. I'm gonna take it, put it in the parts washer and wash 40, over 40 years of crud off of there. Okay, got most of the 98% of the crud off of there. Now we have a video on how to rebuild one of these carburetors, but we're gonna go over this again for the people that haven't seen that video. So the first thing you wanna do is take out the high speed needle. That's this, this is the high speed. This is the adjustment for when the thing is on full fast, which means high speed. That's what high speed stands for. So already looking at that needle, I could tell it's all crud and gummy. So you have to tube that first. Then you gotta get this nozzle out of here. If you don't take that nozzle out and you take these three screws out and you try to separate this, chances are you're gonna break that tube and that tube ain't cheap. Now Briggs has a regular screwdriver for taking it out, but you can get these screwdrivers at the hardware store. See, it's just those regular bits that you can buy or the box door, they work good too. See, they fit right in there. And hopefully yours will come out. Because they also got special taps, Briggs. Because some of these carburetors use regular fine thread, and then some of them are special, and you can only get the taps from them. So there's the nozzle. Don't look too bad. It's not all plugged up. So now we'll take these three screws out here. Take a peek inside. And then we'll replace all the gaskets, of course. We'll put a new gasket on here. Now sometimes these carburetors, they warp between here and here. So if you've got one that's doing that, you put it back together with a new gasket and it's still weeping fuel through here, put two gaskets on, you're not gonna hurt nothing. Go back to the store, buy another one, put it on there. This gasket's coming off without wrecking it. No, not too bad in there. There's some crud down in there. If yours is really bad, blast it in the blast cabinet. I've done that before. 
but I think uh, carb spray will do that. And then we want to check the float. Take the pin out if it'll come out. This one seems, there we go. Gotta be careful. You got one that pin that's stuck, you'll break this mount, and then you're gonna need a new carbon trigger. So we wanna check the float, make sure there's no gas in it. Shake it. Make sure you don't hear any gas in there. If there was gas in there, it'd be heavy and the gas would be pouring out. Look at the needle. Don't look bad for over 40 years old. It wasn't leaking. Yup, we did part of the gasket there, bro. So we'll put a new we'll put a new gasket on. That's no big deal. I got them. And then you can change that seat if you have to. And I got that special seat tool that I made. which consists of a quarter 20 self-tapper, self-tapping screw, see, the self-tapper, it's got the thread, quarter 20 nut, and a sleeve. See? So you put the sleeve over here, make sure the seat can go through it, and you screw this into the seat, and then you tighten the nut and it'll draw out the seat. Because you can buy a seat, a replaceable seat, and I made a tool for doing that. And then I got all kinds of extra parts I made for other stuff. And then I had this made for driving the new seat in. But you could use a, you could use a wooden dowel pin for driving it in. Piece of wooden dowel. I just got that because it holds it in there and I could drive it in. But we're not going to replace this one because it wasn't leaking. We're just going to clean it up, put new gaskets on, put it back together. Oh yeah, this is your low speed screw. This is what regulates the fuel from when you come off of idle and go to high speed. And usually this is one screw, one, one full turn out. So this is a factory setting, don't look like anybody messed with it. So let's turn it in and see how many turns it was. There's a half. There's one, one and a half, two, two and a half turns it was out. Usually you start at one. So I'm going to turn it out at one. Half, one. And then we'll see when we put it back together how it runs. But that's your starting point. This one, one and a half turns, and I'm going to explain this when we put it back together. We're going to clean that up. I'm going to change the O-ring in here. There's an O-ring in here. I'm sure it's hard as a carp. Yeah, it's pretty hard and brittle. Yeah, look, it's all dry rotted. We'll put a new one of them in there. And I'm going to clean this with a Scotch-Brite pad. I'll clean that up and some carb spray. Okay, we got everything clean. Here's the new gasket, 27918. That's for here. Now it looks a little different than the old original one. The original one had two little holes here, but this is the replacement one. So I put the gasket on, and like I said, if yours is warped and it's leaking, just put two of these gaskets on, that's all. Just make it thicker. And we're going to put the needle back on the float. And you want the little pointy part facing that way. You always want it facing out. You don't want it facing towards the hinge. You want it facing out, the little point. Right there, for this little wire that hooks to the needle. So then we'll stick that in. Put the hinge pin in. And we're gonna check our float level. Wanna well, make sure it's level. If you put a new needle and seat in and it's sticking up, try to drive it down a little more. If it's still sticking up, you can bend a little tab. 
and that's on the float. Bend the little tab in there to get your level. Okay, so that's that. This is a very simple carburetor. It works very simply. Put the two halves together. The nozzle. Clean the nozzle. Make sure all the little holes are clear. See, there's a little hole there. Make sure they're all clear. Make sure it's all clear down the center. Because that's what the fuel comes through when it's in the bowl. That's what gets dragged across. Sometimes these nozzles, because it seals here, sometimes it'll leak depending on how the, bad the carburetor is. If that happens, this is a kit they used to make for, an, for a gas tank repair kit for an old push mower. That's the shop pack number from Briggs, 4184. It comes with a roll pin and these little Teflon washers. That's for an old push mower, vertical shaft engine to repair the warped gas tank. So what you could do is if this nozzle is leaking, if you're getting gas in there, say your needle and seat's good, but you're still getting gas leaking past, you just take one of these washers, you stick it over the nozzle. This is a Teflon washer. It's a little tricky. Get it on there. And you stick the nozzle in. Let's shove it down, get it all the way down to here, and then that acts like a seal. I'm pretty, I, if I remember right, I'm pretty sure Briggs would tell you to do this. I think there was a service bulletin back in the day that said if these were leaking, that's what you did. Use that Teflon washer. So there's a little trick for you. You don't have to go crazy tight, just make sure it's tight. Now I got a O-ring assortment, so I got a 3 16th O-ring. You can probably get that at the auto parts store or at the hardware store. 3 16th O-ring. Now remember I was telling you earlier, just put this in a couple of threads. Then put this in. You don't want to screw this all the way in, like this say, because then when you go to put this in here and tighten it down, you might end up jabbing the needle into that nozzle and you're going to put a big groove in here and you're going to ruin it. So back this off. Stick it in there. Tighten it down. Then you could set it. We're going to set it at one and a half. Turn it until it stops. Don't force it. That's a half. That's one. That's one and a half. And then here's the manifold gasket for here. And that's part number 27684. So now we're going to put the carburetor back on the motor. All right, now here's that choke rod. You can see it's got a spring on it, and that's to help return it. It's got a little washer on each side and a spring. See, there's a washer here, one there. So make sure that's in that position if, you, if yours has this type of choke system. So I'm going to stick that back in there, that rod. Now we're going to hook up the throttle rod. Now there's a slot in this bracket right here that this choke rod goes into. See, there's a little, I don't know if the camera, maybe it can pick it up over here. Now 
That's where that goes, see? Goes to the inside of the throttle rod. Now we gotta snake this in. And then we gotta get our gasket in there. So I'm gonna loosen this bracket, this bolt down here that's holding this bracket. So that'll give me some room to get this gasket in here. You don't wanna to try to take the muffkin out because it might be rusted in there and we'll probably destroy it trying to take it out. See, now we got some space. Now I can stick that manifold gasket in there. Make sure you clean both surfaces good, get all the gasket material off. Somebody's getting it on that motorcycle. Woo! I can hear you hear that? Evil Knievel. That must have been Evil Knievel over there. Okay, let's open the gas and see what happens. I got the throttle disconnected, so I'm gonna have to do it by hand. Make sure our choke's working. Nope. Choke, or choke rod, there we go. All right, that choke rod got a little bent. Okay, I got this choke mechanism straightened out. See how that works? That lever on this plate pushes on that rod. It's gotta be back behind there. So it must've got a little bent. So I got it straightened out. So now you can see how that works, see? Choking and releasing. All right, let's see if it'll start. I'm gonna hold it on choke by hand and give it a tug. I'll put my tachometer on there and we'll make sure it's running at the right speed. It sounds like it's running a little fast. Where's my flashlight at? Dang nabbit. There it is. I should put that in my pocket. Because if it's running too fast, we can slow it down. I don't know if the camera can see in there. Let me get some of this 40 plus years crud out of here. We would bend this tab here that the governor's spring is hooked to. We would bend that to take some tension off the spring and that would slow the speed down. But I have to put my tachometer on there to see. But I want to fix the throttle first. So remember I was going to tell you I'm going to fix the throttle that broke. 
So you can see this cable goes through the handle. So I'm going to pull it out of there and I'm going to take this off. And we're going to take it on the bench and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put a new wire in there. Well, my side cutters, I'm going to spread this apart, these little prongs. So I can get this out of here. See? I just pulled it out. Now let's see if the wire, the wire will come out. Oh man, it's froze. Okay, that's fine. Because I've got this conduit and I've got the wire, but we're going to need this piece right here. Now sometimes these will unscrew and sometimes they won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over in advice and I'll show you how I'm going to get that out of there. All right, with brute strength, I'm just going to pull this out of here. Throw that away. Well, I'm going to need it because i got to measure it. Now, I buy this wire from uh, Rotary or Stens. It comes in 100-foot lengths. Now, I don't know if your local shop has any of this stuff, but I do. I get a lot of comments from people telling me they go to their local shops and they're like, they don't have any of that stuff like you got, Terrell. And I'm like, well, that's a shame. So here's the old cable. I'm cutting it the same length. Now I can get rid of it. And then oil the outside of this and it'll seep through to oil it. So I'll shove the new wire in. And you know, we'll leave it long because we can always trim it off. So I'll make it long. All right, so we know we got plenty of that. So now we gotta put this back on. Let's we'll see it don't fit. You know why? Because they crimped it. So what I do, is I take my drill gauge and I So 3 sixteenths will work. And I'll clamp this and I'll drill that out 3 sixteenths and then this will fit on there and then I'll show you how I secure it. Now it fits in there. So now I'm going to take a center punch and I'm going to center punch it on this side and then I'm going to center punch it on the other side and that'll secure it in, in place. Now they make this nifty little tool and it's called a Z-Bender. Stick it in the hole, bend it down, turn it till it goes in there and bend it up. Now sometimes this little leg gets a little long, but you could trim it back. So I'm going to trim a little off. Now I'm going to stick it in there. And then now we got to stick it back in the control. And then squeeze it tight again. I usually use the side cutters to squeeze it together. Now it's in there. Now it's fixed. See? Now I'm going to put this back in there and I'm going to lubricate all this up and then we have to bend the other end. We got to figure out how long to make this so we don't cut it too short and then bend the Z on that end and secure it. Then we're going to change the oil on that tiller, put a new air filter in it and then it'll be good to go for the customer. Ow! Look at what I did, I just stabbed myself. All right, I'm going to spray some gel lube on there, and we sell this in our web store if you want to buy some. This is good stuff for those of you that don't know. So I'm going to spray the outside of the cable, spray some down in this hole where the cable goes through. Like I said, it'll soak in through there.
All right, I gotta get the Z bender and my cotter. So we got it all the way down that choke, which means it's pulling the cable all the way in. And stop is pushing it all the way out. All right, so the cable's gonna go like this, and this is all the way back for choke. So we're gonna wanna gonna want to cut it probably right about here. Right about there. Now to get the Z in the right spot, I want to bend it out towards me, flip it around, and then bend it in. See, now it's in the perfect position. Like I said, I may have to trim this off. See, it's a little long trying to get it in there. So I'll just trim a little bit off the end. That's the end that stabbed me. Okay, now we'll put the clamp on. All right, now let's cycle it, see what happens. Woo! Going all the way to stop, going all the way full chokage, and it's taking the choke off. So before I change the oil, I'm going to want to run it and get it hot. Now I already knew ahead of time that the gearbox was good on that. That was the very first thing I checked. So I don't want to take in a piece of equipment, do all this work, find out that gearbox is shot. Look at how heavy duty this thing is made. Look at it. They don't make stuff like this no more. That's why this thing is still around after 40 some years. And it's really not in that bad of shape, it's just dirty. You know what I found over here? Check this out. An archaeological find. Look at that. That there's a 5,000 year old bone. That's probably a bone from 1974. Okay, I found the, the fill plug for the transmission case, and I want to check that too to make sure. I'm sure this thing's got leaky seals. So when I take this off, the oil should be at the bottom of the threads, and it's not. So you fill it to where it's just at the bottom. And what it takes is SAE 30. So I'm going to tilt it back, see if there's any. Yeah, there's oil in it. Now. If it was gear oil, gear oil has got a, a distinctive smell. It smells like uh, Slipper's farts. I think he's drinking that, that gear oil. That's why his farts smell that way. So I can smell this. And I know this isn't gear oil. It's 30 weight. Yeah, that's 30 weight. I can tell. It's not 1030. So then I, I would just fill it with 30 weight till it's at the bottom of the threads. That's your level. Here's the air filter element. They still make it. Part number 270093. Stenz has got it, 102194. And I'm sure Rotary in Oregon got it too. So I'm gonna cut the bag open. I'm gonna pour some motor oil in there. And I'm gonna squeeze the motor oil through the filter because the motor oil is what catches the dirt that's what the dirt sticks to is the motor oil because if you don't oil it that dirt will pass right through the foam and then I'll stick it on this cage that you know it came with and we'll stick it back on but I'm gonna run it first get it hot so I can change the oil you always want to change the oil when it's hot and we're gonna put straight 30 weight in it when we give it back to the guy you can put 30 or 1030, but since it's going to be used in the spring and summertime, 30 weight will be fine. But I want to get it hot, so I'm going to take it outside and run it, do a little tilling with it. All right, old Terrell found another problem with this old tiller. When I'm running it, the belt's spinning all the time, even though the idler on here is not putting any tension on it. So it's got the wrong belt on it. And you're not going to be able to put it in gear if this thing is spinning. You'd have to put it in gear and then start it. And then as soon as you do that, it wants to take off on you. And that's not safe. 
Now, the customer that brought this in said he got this tiller from a feller. Now, this is no lie. I'm not making this up. Just to be funny. He said he got it for a six-pack of beer. Can you believe that? And I know you people watching this video are going to go, Man, I gave that guy a 12-pack or a case or two cases. Yeah, he got a deal, a six-pack of beer. You know what else the guy he got it from said? He was using it last year. Now, come on. He wasn't using this thing last year. He's a fibber, a fibber McGee. So, bring it back in the shop. I'm gonna pull the cover off. We're gonna put a, a, a longer belt on it and I'll show you how I do that. Cause I know you want to see it. belt measuring tool so we're going to measure the belt and the belt is pert near 37 inches so let's see if we got a 37 inch belt that'll be a little longer that may be what we need okay as I promised I got my digital tack hooked to the spark plug wire and this is a tool made by Briggs it's got these little slots cut in each end and this tool is for bending that tab to adjust the speed for the governor. This is an actual tool. So let's start it up and see what we're running at. Close enough. Now I had to open that carburetor just a little bit more to get it to smooth out, and that's probably because we had to run it a while. And as you can see, it's kind of tricky to get that in there to bend on that tab and then show you with the filming, but that's how that works. Now we got to do the belt. We got one on order, it'll be here tomorrow. Okay, the belt came in. 
It's a half by 37. That's what it calls for, half by 37. So let's put it on. Oh yeah, it's going on a lot easier than that other one. Now in order for this to work correctly, you got to have the belt guard on. Otherwise, it, it'll keep spinning on you. All right, let's see if it works like it's supposed to. When a piece of equipment comes into my shop, how I go about fixing it, the steps I take. And now all I gotta do is clean it all up, make it look all nice and pretty for the customer. So, if you like this video, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe. And also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, okay? Do that, please. And as always, There's your dinner. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Hey, Pa! What's all this easy work stuff doing back here? Playing in a bonfire? <laughs> no way, Junior. They revamped the line. It's all good quality stuff now. So why don't you crack open one of them boxes and let's see what kind of good stuff they sent us. All right, you say so. Get out of the way! What the heck? It's a bunch of worthless action figures. That's not what I ordered. What happened to all the units I ordered from Ronnie? Ronnie? Why would you take out a line from that scumbag? You know he's a scammer. That was the only way I could get this collectible toy chainsaw for my toy chainsaw collection. You mean to tell me you got scammed out of a bunch of money for a toy chainsaw and you didn't even end up getting the units? What are we gonna do with all this crap? We can't sell this. Did somebody say action figures? Oh, 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 look at this. Will Clark, David Cohn, Paul O'Neill. I'll give you top dollar for all of it right now. Okay. What else is in here? Ooh, oof. Take a look at this check, Ronald. You see anything wrong here? No, everything looks good to me, sir. I don't, I don't see anything. Ronald, take a closer look here. You see this line here? Yeah. They don't go by what's written in the box. They go by what's written out. This check's worth $1.18. Oh, are you serious? You got me. Yeah, we're going to have to take the difference out of your last check. Oh, oh. Yeah, notice I said last check. Clean your desk out. You're fired. Oh, no. No. Uh, why? No. Come on, you're drooling on my desk. Get out of here. Oh, no. Security. No. Larry Walker, ooh, yeah.